Welcome to all the scientists working on senescence that have joined us today for this um, joyful event. Uh, it is an honor for me and for the society, the International Cell Senescence Association, to present this uh, first honorary membership to Professor Leonard Hayflick. We are very proud of having you as our honorary member, our first honorary member. Professor Hayflick uh, is the unquestionable founder of this field of research, cellular senescence, a discovery that he made more than 60 years ago. His legacy uh, has been growing over the years, of course, with ups and downs, with doubts, with challenges, which is the normal path of uh, scientific uh, maturation. But the fact that 60 years after we are all here, there is a international society, there are annual meetings every year, there are uh, hundreds of publications, is the proof that his seminal discovery was actually uh, uncovering a new biology, a new biology that is giving clues to understand uh, human diseases, to understand human aging, and to understand uh, biology in general. So with this, uh, I'm going to give the floor to Dot Bennett. Dot Bennett was the founder of the International Cells and Essence Association and the past president. And I think that she deserves and she is the right person to do this eulogy about your discoveries. Please, Dot. Thanks very much, Manuel. And uh, uh, well, of course, Dr. Hayflick needs little or no introduction to this audience as the person who started off our, our whole field, as Manuel said. But uh, I'll say a few words anyway. Uh, I won't plan to talk for very long, but I would love to tell you just briefly how some of us heard of Dr. Hayflick and his work uh, back in the 1970s in London. So I was a PhD student then in a big cancer institute and working with somebody called Delbeco. Uh, yes, the guy with the culture medium. Uh, he was in London for a period. Uh, so my project involved culturing normal epithelial cells, normal epithelial cells from rat mammary gland to compare with rat mammary tumor cells. But uh, every normal culture grew for just a few passages. And then guess what? The cells got big and flat and stopped dividing. So this was particularly striking because when I grew the very similar epithelial cells from a benign rat mammary tumor, they didn't stop growing. So other scientists around me in the Institute were having similar experiences with trying to grow normal cells. And then one colleague said there were people in the USA talking about this thing called cell senescence. And it was actually a characteristic of normal cells to divide only a limited number of times. And this was being called the Hayflick limit. So, so I read those papers and they did make sense of what I and, and my colleagues were, were seeing at that time. So, well, to me, this finding seemed huge. It seemed a major biological difference between tumor cells and normal cells. And uh, why wasn't everybody talking about this? So, well, skipping to a mere 45 years later on, uh, it does seem as if everybody is talking about it finally. Uh, so, uh, of course, we now understand a lot about cell senescence and we know that it is both a major tumour suppressor mechanism and also a central player in the biology of ageing. Now, um, Dr. Hayflick's discovery of cell senescence was revolutionary enough, but we, sh we should take note that he also 
made a range of other major scientific contributions. Some of you are, are well aware, uh, and I don't want to take much more time, but let's just briefly recall a few of those other achievements. So virtually all of you must have used an inverted microscope uh, to view cell cultures, and it was Dr. Hayflick who developed the first inverted microscope. He contributed a lot to cell culture technology, and he isolated many normal human fibroblast lines, so including the famous WI38 cells, which have been used around the world and are still widely used for preparing vaccines, human virus vaccines, such as for rubella. Uh, he used the cells himself to prepare the first oral polio vaccine. Uh, another one, he was first to identify a, a mycoplasma as an agent for human pneumonia. So he was the first to isolate cultures of that organism and he named it, so mycoplasma pneumoniae. So of course he's published many papers and held many senior scientific offices and consultancies, which I won't try and list. Uh, he is still a faculty member at UCSF, the University of California at San Francisco. And finally, he has received a variety of scientific awards and honours, and so it will be our great pleasure to add one more award to his list. And so will that, with that, I will stop and hand back to Manuel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Bennett. I would like to call now Marta Kovacheva, president of the Young International Cells and Essence Association that is going to make another eulogy about the inspirational figure of Professor Hayflick. Marta, please. Thanks very much, Manuel. Um, so yeah, I, I think that our story will pick up fast forwarding a little bit from the, the really lovely history that Dot gave kind of of where the field was when Dr. Hayflick was first making his discoveries and shortly thereafter. And um, our story, well, of course, for the young ICSA uh, Association starts probably in our high school or university biology classes, where by the time that we reached it, um, Dr. Hayflick was already a household name. So kind of this foundational, inspirational character that we could just read about in the pages of our textbooks. And everyone knew this term, the, the Hayflick limit, of course. And um, I have to say that our interaction here with the, with the Young ICSA Society actually started because Dr. Hayflick joined our mailing list. And when we first saw the name Leonard Hayflick, um, I have to say, us on the Young Ixa committee, we were kind of messaging back and forth and we were in sheer disbelief. We were in shock and we almost thought that it was someone signing up as a joke because we didn't believe that the Leonard Hayflick could be registering for our society. And it was this moment of, of surrealism, this kind of living dream. And then as soon as we, we realized that it was in fact you, we knew right away that we needed to ask you if you would be willing to give us a seminar. Um, and of course, we're, we're very grateful that you accepted and that we've had been able to carry on these interactions and learn a great deal about your experiences, much more beyond what the textbooks have taught us. Um, and I really think that sequence of events speaks to the magnitude of importance that you hold in the field and, and for all of us young scientists or us budding senescence biologists, as it were. Um, I really think that, you know, people often ask the question, if you could have dinner with any scientist past or present, who would it be? And I am confident to say that I know Dr. Hayflick would be at the top of the list, kind of the tip of the tongue for many of us in the senescence field. And it's been an honor and a great privilege to get to interact with you and, and hear about your experiences and the birth of this field that we now sort of devote our scientific selves to. Um, and, and just beyond that, I think I want to echo a little bit more of what Dot said that, of course, we, we knew Dr. Hayflick for the Hayflick limit, but it's been incredibly inspiring and, and fascinating to learn about all the other contributions that you've made um, to, to biology, to cell biology. Um, and I've had many people after your seminar actually uh, joke to me, or maybe it's not a joke, I don't know, we'll have to visit the labs to see, but they say, you know, oh, we need to hang a photo of Leonard Hayflick outside of our tissue culture room because you're not worthy of entering unless you recognize uh, the contributions that he's made and the fact that we can do the things that we do, um, thanks in great part to so many of, of his contributions. <laughs> um, so I really think 
all of this just speaks volumes about the, the sort of influence you have on the community, you have on us. Um, and we're very grateful to have had the privilege um, to share these, these times with you and now to be part of this presentation of the first honorary membership of the ICSA Society. Um, so I just want to say on behalf of myself, the young ICSA members, and all of our members around the world, um, congratulations and thank you, not just for your time, not just for your scientific contributions and achievements, but most importantly, for the inspiration that you've given us and will continue to give many generations of scientists to come. So thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. Um, and uh, with this, uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Hayflick if you would make us the honor of unwrapping or unveiling the plaque. I'm happy to do that. I'm sorry. I uh, had my attention diverted for a moment there. Uh, but as I warned several of you earlier, when I unveil this plaque, those of you who have had a course in the physics of optics will understand why you can't read the plaque because you're going to see a mirror image. However, I will uh, read the contents of the plaque so that you will uh, understand what it says. So, in my uh, primitive unveiling technology, uh, this is what you will see. Let me see if I can. Now, now that you've seen the mirror image, <laughs> let me... In fact, it's not a mirror image. We can see it the right way round, Professor. Uh, you can see I it think right way that round. Zoom, well, zoom is very my, clever. In my image, it's uh, a mirror image. So someone with a degree in the physics of optics will after this uh, presentation finishes, explain to me the uh, fact that apparently all of you can see it right, uh, uh, correctly. So I don't need to read it then, is that correct? correct. That's correct. correct. I think what it says, Len, is that you have the ability to be a race a mace. You have inverted the field of senescence. <laughs> And you have even inverted the optics that are at play in this lovely event. Well, am I the L form or the D form? <laughs> no, no, D, nobody, because... <laughs> okay. no, nobody has the courage to, uh, to answer that. Okay. Well, for Leonard, <laughs> Professor <laughs> Hayflick, uh, it would be an honor for us if you could say a few words. Thank you very much, Manuel. I will, I will try to do that. I was impressed, first of all, humbled by the remarks made by those of you who spoke earlier. Um, I, I had the thought that when uh, Dot mentioned that uh, she saw my name asking for to become a member of the, of the association. Um, I was worried that someone, and, and no one did say this, which surprised me, that no one said, is he still alive? Uh, and the answer to that question is yes, I'm still alive. Uh, although some people have, in fact, asked, uh, posed that question, or uh, not, not from this association, but in other circumstances. Uh, I intend to remain alive for a few more years because I, my bi biology generally, at least in um, areas of health, have followed the path of my mother who uh, died at the age of 106. 
So this is a warning that you may have to tolerate me for a few more years. But getting back to, uh, to the uh, circumstances of the discovery that I made, which I, as you, all of you must know, was an accident. And that is an important message, I think. Many of you know that discoveries in science have, um, many important ones have been made as a result of accidents. And my accident was, uh, was something I've just been reflected, reflecting on in uh, recent years because it was uh, it wasn't a following strange circumstances i was of course working at the wistar institute at that time this is six that's uh, let's see more than 60 years ago it was a large institute we had a num many people working on with cell cultures and so we had a walk-in incubator which as the name implies was a huge room with shelves and the room kept at incubator temperature and people were assigned various parts of the shelving to uh, incubate their cultures. And I was uh, incubating cultures that I derived from human fetal tissue for reasons that I think many of you know, it was an effort to, to determine whether viruses caused human cancer, uh, which at that time was a very popular area of research, especially in with using laboratory animals, I decided to use human cells. It was easy to get um, cancer tissue from the hospital across the street, but getting human cells was very difficult. Furthermore, I wanted tissue from human fetuses because it was well known at that time that adult human tissue often contained uh, uh, common viruses that were hiding in the tissue, and that would have fouled up my experiments. Well, when I walked into the incubator one day and saw that the one of the cultures uh, had stopped dividing, which I could easily tell because you could see mitotic figures in the other cultures, which meant that the division was occurring properly, but in the one culture, not. That didn't surprise me because in those days, cell cultures were difficult to conduct because of, uh, of a common occurrence of contamination with microorganisms and failures to supply proper uh, nutrients, which were unknown at that time and still substantially unknown. Uh, so that wasn't a big surprise when that happened to one culture. But as the weeks went by, I found that after the other cultures were subcultivated, they were also showing cessation of division. Then I had the, the uh, idea of looking at my notebook to see the origin of these tissues. And lo and behold, the ones that showed failed replication were cultures that have been subcultivated the most number of times. And that was the, it wasn't a eureka moment. I remember thinking to myself, that's funny. So I'm going to call it a that's funny moment. And the funniness was something that triggered my interest. And I began to look at this further and further and further, uh, believing as I had been taught that I had done something wrong, that the culture media was wrong, the glassware, which the plasticware was not available then, glassware was not properly washed, the media was wrong, but that didn't make sense either because all of those variables were, were constant for all of the cultures, same media, same pool of glassware, same technician, all were uh, used for all of the cultures. So why should the oldest ones uh, show, uh, show cessation of division? So that was the trigger and the rest of the story, I think you know, I'll simply end this this discourse by uh, 
mentioning that uh, the necessity for discussing my work and Paul Moorhead's major contributions uh, to the, cyto uh, cy uh, the uh, cytogenetics of the, of the cells uh, required a discussion of what it meant. And I will say without um, the fear of being ridiculed that I had no explanation for this. And because the field of aging at that time, that is research on aging was such a mystery and so few people working in that field at the time that it became a kind of dumping ground for uh, observations who, that had no other explanation. And so I uh, admit, honestly, that I thought that this might be telling us something about aging or senescence. And as those of you who read my papers will uh, have read that that is one of my suggested interpretations of what I had found. So in conclusion, I can only say for the ears of the young scientists uh, viewing this presentation that, uh, that they should question everything that they see that they don't understand until they get an answer that, that makes sense. In ending, I just wanna thank everyone in the organization who played a role in making this pre presentation to me. It's a great honor. I'm flattered and also humbled uh, to have received this, this honor. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Hayflick. We are the ones that are proud of having you among us. And we hope that we have many productive interactions in the future with the society. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank Dot Bennett and Marta Kovacheva for taking care of the many details that were behind this event. And I want to thank you all for being here participating in this and with this I will finish and I wish you a happy day and Professor Hayflick uh, we keep in touch. Thank you all again bye bye. Bye. Thank you Thank congratulations bye-bye.